Dea. Red. Come in. I've barely slept for fear you would not come. I'm at a loss. Would God even allow me to drag you into these... these dark times? Esther, you're not alone now. We're here. I'm so sorry we didn't get here on time. Truly. I know. Charles kept saying it. Have faith. They will come. If only he had kept his faith himself. What happened to him? Poor Charles. Just one more victim of the curse of New Eden. You know how he is. Was. Restless. Impatient. It's not that he gave up on you, his friends. But that he could wait no more. I believe he tried to lift the curse. I too have questions. But I have no answers. Nor do I now have a husband. Is there anything we should know about? Lord, deliver me, for I cannot endure this. I cannot endure it, and Charles does not deserve it. Anything at all, Esther. Please. I have felt Charles present about the house. His ghost lingers. He needs help. If he's here, I promise I will know no rest until he has his. You can count on us. We'll start with the house. Charles's papers are gathered in his office. Take what you need. Thank you, Esther. How were things, you know, before all this? Before the curse? It was a busy and exciting time. Charles immersed himself in the community here. He had a hand in everything. The people came to rely on him. I'm sure they look to someone else now, but I can't imagine it's the same. What can you tell me about the esteemed Governor Haskell? Fairfax Haskell is well-read and educated, but at times his back can be too stiff. He shares Charles' interest in the unknown, but his passion seems less than practical. He is an academic. Still, good to know our patron has some understanding of our work. We met the captain, too, along with the huntress, Thickskin. Do you know them? I find thick-skinned Newsmith's manner a little frightening, but I think she has a good heart. A fine hunter by all accounts. Captain Pennington comes with a reputation for soldiering. He comports himself with a wry dignity, but I suspect that beneath it all, he's just... sad. Charles thought so too. There are wounds beneath Saul Pennington's armor, he said that time and God have not yet healed. We'll take a look around, if that's all right. May I be of any help? You stay put. We'll find the way. Purcell, could you find nothing better? These days I lack the heart to play. I believe you brought your piano forte to New England. It cost a fortune. But you cannot part a pianist from their beloved keys.
I didn't know Elnor and Charles were still in touch. The St. Paul Brotherhood is a tie that binds. Charles was so eager to continue his research here in New Eden. If only we had known what would befall us. Have you received other visitors? Most dare not leave their homes. Although Mr. Bachelor came to see me, that was nice of him. Where are you staying, my dears? The governor had a room prepared for us in the schoolhouse. The schoolhouse? Wouldn't you rather stay here? You'd be more comfortable. It's very kind, but a long day ahead of us. We don't want to bother you. I don't have much. But promise me you'll come for dinner tomorrow. For all time's sake. Of course. This is Charles's. It's like he never left. There's more to learn here. How pleasant to see these old, familiar things from your house in London. That porcelain saw many a dinner-turned-lecture with Charles. I miss him so. So do we, Esther. Are you hungry, dear? You must be starving after such a long trip. Well, I thought we'd said we'd have dinner tomorrow. It's no trouble. Save your provisions, Esther. I'm all right, really. Rory McGraith isn't hungry. Truly, doomsday is upon us. Charles is still here, and Esther is completely distraught. She lost him, and now he's back, a ghastly figure. It must be unbearable. Faith always was his beacon in the darkness. In people as much as in God. He's a good man. That's from the set he taught me with. I'd know it anywhere. Did he keep it to remind him of his favorite? Or to remind him that he had yet to beat me? I can still picture him crafting your very first Bane Ring. You sound much more fond of the moment now than you were back then. Bit green for an actual haunting, you said. <laughs> you were. 
Still, you did all right. Charles's notes mention Job, chapter 7, verses 13 to 15. I'll look for that reference. Red, you dropped something. Mm hmm? These notes are erratic ramblings. Charles was worried about the curse plaguing the settlers' dreams. How malicious is this curse tormenting people in their beds? Remember when he started to wear these to look wiser and older? <laughs> he was hiding his hair loss.
Charles always wore this brooch. His things are untouched. Nothing's moved. Remember how they used to argue about books we hadn't read? Like we weren't there? Oh, you actually listened. I'd always let my mind wander. Esther couldn't attend Charles's burial. Poor woman. That's terrible for her. Esther never got to say farewell to Charles. I could have made him manifest. Now that we know why he might be back, we should go investigate the cemetery where he was found. Esther, I'm sorry to trouble you once more. How may I help? With all that's happened, how are you bearing up? This all feels so unreal. Just one more nightmare from which I cannot wake. It seems so now, but that will change, I promise. Was there something I should have done differently? Did I fail him? Did I fail, Charles? None of this is your fault. I do not want to believe he is gone. He cannot be gone. I do not permit him to be gone. You're in pain, and that might have brought him back. Maybe he lingers because you suffer. We'll do what we can to ease your pain. And we'll do what we can for Charles. Has the curse brought with it nightmares? Yes. I've had nightmares. I suspect we all have. 
Charles warned that something was stalking our dreams, that it had a use for us, that we needed to fight it with all God's might. But now Charles is gone and my nightmares have changed. In my sleep I see my husband falling, screaming into the abyss. All hear him, none respond. He plummets on into the bottomless pit. Poor Charles. We must make our way to the cemetery. Please be careful, dear Antea. What will you do for my Charles? If he's present, we'll find him. Then we'll ask him what he wants us to do. Must I see him too? First, let's find out what happened. After that, we'll see. Best get started. Time may be against us. You'll be all right. I doubt it, but I'll do my work all the same. We came here to help Charles and help Charles with Shao. Ask around, see what people will tell you. I'll go to the cemetery and do the same. Be careful. Hi, you too. I must take a moment by myself. Excuse me. Get out of my way. This fire can't have started on its own, not in this cold. Be warned. I need but cry out, and help shall come in an instant. Calm you, sir. Antea Duarte, Minister Davenport's banisher. Oh, oh, of course, I'm so sorry. Poor Reverend Davenport, his death has shaken us all. Welcome to New Eden. 
I'm afraid you find us at our worst. We're banishers. There's nowhere else we'd rather be. And you are? I, madam, am Squire Sincere Paris, traveling merchant, stuck in this cursed place and eager to be somewhere else. Tell me about the curse, if you will. Well, I'll tell you this. Those who dare defy the curse are brave indeed, and, I fear, foolish. Banishing is a job, sir. And to do it, I need detail. If you please. A banisher must have charms. Uh, trinkets, I mean, of protection. If you have a surplus, I'd happily relieve you of your burden. What I need right now is information about the curse. What have you seen that might help me with my work? I've seen famine, madness, the shadow of early death. Weather, too. So much weather. I mean, I've seen it all before, but never all at once. Here, it's everything, everywhere, and all at the same time. Folks stay indoors, waiting to be told what to do. Waiting to die, really. Ghosts in the making, all of them. The nightmares. Do you get them too? Of course I do. Not everyone will admit it, but we all have bad dreams. Of what do you dream? I dream someone watches me sleep. I sometimes fancy she's present when I'm awake. She never speaks, nor moves. She seems to wish me no harm. She just stands there, watching me, waiting, taking my measure. Does she manifest at a particular hour? If she does, I have no way of knowing it. Unable as we are in this interminable grey to tell day from night. Well, there you are. Information on the curse, as per your request. Uh, I won't even charge you for it. <laughs> You're leaving town? As soon as possible. Did you arrive by sea? A ship lies at anchor in the bay. Perhaps a captain would take me and my wares to safety. The crew refused to dock, and I suspect they'll leave on the next available tide. We rowed ourselves ashore. Might I ask where you abandoned this rowboat of yours? Along the coast, by a path remarkable for its angry spectres and bloody corpses. If you wish to make the sailing, I hope your wares can swim. Care to trade? Most of my goods are already packed, but I never refuse a deal. I bid you good day, Squire Paris, 
and thank you for your time. A pleasure, Mistress Duarte. Do be careful. So close to town. Where are you leading me? Most of these people died fighting. Someone didn't want them here. I've seen more graves here than I've met settlers. Many dead in more recent years.
Why didn't you wait for us, old friend? I swear I'll make it up to you. Everyone buried here died in 1677. A previous epidemic? A memory lingers here. I might be able to reveal it. If I mix the stones I found earlier with seashore candle, that might do it. There should be seashore candle near the water.
There should be seashore candle near the water. In each stain hides a story. In the name of the Lord, I command you. Be gone from this place! You do not command me, clergyman. Who are you, ghost? Unveil yourself! Well, since you ask so politely... Who are you? I am everything you've ever feared! Be gone! You have no shell! No ties! No purpose! No. But neither do you. Damn it. That thing he faced. What was it?
The tie that binds his ghost. With it, I can make him manifest. Back to his grave, then. Now is a good time for we old friends to talk. We've come too far, Red and I, not to see you one last time. Your pupil has become the master. If we fight, I'll beat you. Come on, Charles. Join me now. I know you're here. I know you're here. You know me, Ghost. I only wish to talk. Esther worries. And here, at last. Oh, poor Esther. I'm so sorry, my friend. So sorry for us all. What happened? What's going on here? Sad to say, dear friend. I made a mistake. And it cost me my life. Is Red with you? There is no time to waste. Do you know how this curse began? What prompted it, I do not know. Nor do I know when. Many months ago, certainly. But I do know this. This nightmare chose New Eden for a reason. So, a ghost. This one is different. Implacable. Very clever. Many magnitudes more ferocious than a spectre. And just as relentless. Why did you not wait for our help? The threat was rising. Despair growing. There were so many dead and dead. So much sickened flesh. So many afflicted souls. There was no more time. Before you died, you investigated the curse. What did you learn? That our enemy is deceptive and merciless. That we should not underestimate its power. We? I am dead, dearest Dante. But I am a banisher yet. I may still teach you. If I allow you, which I do not. Dante, do not repeat my mistakes. If a nightmare curses New Eden, you need all the help you can get. Its presence felt strongest in the meeting house. 
Perhaps the light of God there forced it to fight its ground. I had the building closed. The worst of the malevolence is contained. But it won't stay locked up for long. I thought nightmares were a myth. A nightmare is the rarest of ghosts. A powerful, insidious spirit, birthed by tragedy most dreadful. How do I banish it? There is meager wisdom in the texts. What little there is says it cannot be banished at all. If it's a ghost, I can banish it. You took notes, I suppose? Where might I find them? They... vanished. <laughs> in the days before my death. Perhaps I mislaid them. Which is not like me. If you find them, read them carefully. Perhaps I missed something. Something important. We'll banish it, Red and I. Our good friend's death shall not go unpunished. Be warned. This nightmare is too angry to be persuaded. And too powerful to be destroyed. Your death pains us greatly. Your return pains me too. I know. For my part, I'm glad to have seen you one last time. To have had the chance to warn you. How did this nightmare kill you? I believed that I could come to the cemetery and make it manifest. To my initial delight, it worked. I now suspect it came by choice. It seemed amused, as if it were a pleasant game to weigh my measure as a man. How does its malevolence manifest? It poisons minds and sickens bodies. It draws spectres to it and sours the weather. It delivers nightmares to one's sleep. For a time, screams tore through the night as folk awoke in terror. When it appeared to me, I did not see its true face. But I heard a woman. She was... Love. I felt her gaze. My heart froze. I died. The spirit is vengeance pure. The ghost of one who was terribly wronged. I've heard your warning. You can go. No. I must remain. Esther needs my protection. My flock needs me too. You know how this works. You know I won't allow that. I am still myself, Antea. With time, I'll grow stronger. I can help you. The longer you haunt Esther, the hungrier you'll be. You know this. This is different. I'm the Reverend Charles Davenport, your friend and mentor. You know me. You know I am a good man. I knew you. You were a good man. Now you are a ghost. And I cannot let that stand. But I swear it, the nightmare will end, and Red and I shall do the ending. Charles Davenport was a good man, and a fine mentor. And you a fine student, though you took a hard line. I never could unpick that from your character. Has life tempered you since? Life has tempered my steel. Death and the manner of it has made you the very thing you once opposed. Goodbye, Charles. Peace on your soul. Remembrance on your soul. Antea, wait. Wait for what? We're banishers. Death to the dead. Let Esther choose themselves. Oh Lord, please don't ask me to do that. Esther, my good wife, and the very best. I miss you so. Oh dear Lord, Charles, why are you here? Why have you come back? You must leave, please. I must leave. I must protect you. 
The thing in the meeting house feeds on our torment. I should have known better. I know better now. And Tia, give Charlie the ascent he deserves. Charles Davenport, you have no reason to stay. Go. Let Esther grieve in peace. Save her, my friends. And save yourselves. Save them all. I'll walk Esther home. I'll do it. The women can talk. Uh, then, all the way to the schoolhouse and make the bed. Charles is at rest now. And Tia, she gave him the care he needed. <laughs> 